Today we're going to talk about advanced prototyping. We're going to look at some really cool tricks to make your prototypes just go to the next level. If you've never done any prototyping before, I really recommend that you stop now and go and look at my prototyping session. We're also going to play around with some components and auto layouts. So if you're not familiar with those, go and watch those videos as well. First type of prototyping we're going to look at is a variant interaction. And that means if I have a component that has some variations to it, I can connect those and then use that in my main prototype. Let's jump in. So let's say I have this form over here and I wanna create this little form prototype. Now I've got this question and there's some options available for it. And let's say I wanna add this sort of checkbox next to it and I want the user to be able to press in and select their option that they want. Now there's multiple ways of doing this. If you wanna go really old school and simple, you can just add one of these onto here and then create multiple screens and duplicate them and say this one has this one selected, this one has this one selected, and then just navigate to on click from the different checkboxes boxes. So what we're going to do now is show you how we can do that in a much simpler way. First thing I need to do is to combine these two checkboxes into a component set. So I select both of them and up here in the toolbar I say create component set. They are now one component with two variations. Again, if you've never played around with components and variants before, please watch my components video where I go through all of this really slowly, step by step. The property is probably on and off or selected. And then this one is not selected. So I'm gonna say false. And this one is selected. So I'm going to say true. Okay, so I've set up my uh, variants and I've got those two going for us. Now I know that I want the user to be able to tap on the unselected one and get to the selected one and tap on the selected one and get to the unselected one. So I'm gonna go to prototype and create a variant interaction. If I select my false one and then add an interaction and say on tap, I want it to change to, we've never seen this before, I want it to change to, and then it's gonna show me all of the options that I have on my component. So because I set it to false and true, I get a toggle. So I'm gonna say when it's on selected, I want it to change to true version. And I'm gonna set it to smart animate. It just means it makes it a bit nicer looking. I'm gonna do the same thing in the other way around. So when it's on selected and the user taps, I want it to change to not selected. And you see, I've got these noodles appearing here that go backwards and forwards. Now I'm gonna go back to my design panel and I'm gonna paste this in. So I've just got this question kind of all set to go for you and these are auto layouts. So if I select this radio button and I'm gonna command C, and then select this radio list that I've auto lay out and just paste that inside there. I'm gonna use my arrow key to bring it before the option and do that again over here and over here. So I've got this question. I'm gonna drop this question into my frame, just paste it in and then maybe duplicate it a few more times. So I'm gonna option and shift to duplicate and drag it down. Great. Now I'm gonna click on my frame, go into prototype and I'm gonna add a flow starting point because I wanna watch just this one happen. So I'm gonna say plus, I'm gonna call this form variant interaction. Now when I play this, you will see that now I can click into these components and just select them. And if I tap again, tap again, tap again, tap again, it will just swap between those two because I set it on the component level and it knows. If I double click into here, into uh, one of the variants, so this is the main component, this is a variant, you can see over here it has a variant interaction already set on it because it's taking it for its main component. I can remove it if I want, but I don't wanna do that for now. So that was one really quick way of creating some advanced prototyping that takes off loads of design work instead of creating duplications of screen. Just set that on the variant level and you're good to go. Another really cool way that you can use the variant interaction is to create, let's say, a hover state, a click state, all of that. So for example, if you have a navigation bar, you hover over it with your mouse and once you hover over, it needs to have a line underneath and then when you click on it, it needs to look a specific way. So we can make that once and then reuse it multiple times. Let's do that together. Together. I'm gonna click on T, tap in and say label because I don't know what the label is going to be. And then I'm gonna create this multiple times for my different states. So in my normal state, it probably just looks like this. I'm gonna duplicate it and say, when you hover over it, maybe there's a line underneath it. So I'm gonna click on L and add a line underneath. I'm gonna maybe make it red 
and give it just some rounded edges. Um, and then I'm gonna say, maybe once you click on it, it looks different because now we're kind of in that page. So maybe once you click on it, it becomes bolder and maybe it has a different color. It's gonna be blue. Okay, so we have these three, three states and we know that every single one of our titles in our navigation bar needs to respond the same. So we can create it once and just save ourselves loads of work. So first of all, I need to just put these two together. So I'm gonna put them into an auto layout. I'm gonna shift A to just put them together. And then I'm gonna select all three and put them into a component set like I did before. I'm gonna call this component set um, navigation title and then let's set the properties so the property is going to be maybe state and then this state is um, unselected this one is hover and then this one is clicked or selected maybe selected yeah now one more thing i just need to do is because i know that the name is going to change i want to protect myself so i'm gonna just go into here and make the line on fill container, uh, which means that when the text grows, it will grow as well to make sure that it's always the same kind of width as the text above it. If you don't understand this, please go watch my auto layout session. So I'm gonna set some interactions between these on the component level. So I'm gonna say on tap of the um, selected one, I want you to change to the selected one. I'm going to put it on small anime just to make it nicer. Then we're going to do the opposite as well. So when you're on the selected one and you tap on it, you change to the not selected one. Great. Now I want to add another interaction for the not selected one that when you hover over it, you see that red line underneath. So I'm going to say while hovering, change to hover. Now we get a little error here and I want you to see what this error is saying is because Figma is so smart. Figma is telling me, you told me that when you tap on this, you go to this one. But now you're telling me when you hover over this, you're, you're, you're actually changing to this one. And that means that you're never actually going to be able to tap on this because once you hover over it, it changes to this one. So the tap option shouldn't come from this one. I'm gonna remove it. The tap option should come from the hovered state because once we hover over the unselected one, it becomes a hovered state. And then we have that one is the one that needs to be connected to the selected one. So I'm gonna do from um, the hover state change to selected. Right, so we've got that going for us. Once you hover over this, it changes to that. When you tap on this, it changes to this. When you tap on this, it changes back to this. Great. Now let's use these. We're gonna use these again inside of, um, I'm just gonna move it up a bit. Uh, we're just gonna use these in here. We're gonna create a little fake space over here. So I'm gonna click on my not selected label. I'm gonna copy it and just paste it into my frame over here. So I'm gonna command V and make sure you're on the design panel so you can just grab it and move it down to here. Um, and then I'm gonna Command D to make a few of these. So Command D, drag, Command D, Command D, Command D. And I'm gonna change the names a bit just so we can see the different ones. Great, now when I go into my prototype, I don't have to run it again, it just updates automatically. When I hover over these, look what happens. So when I hover over them, do you see I get that red a red line appear because I've set that. And if I click on one of them, look, it changes to be blue. And if I unclick on it, it goes back to that. And I can hover over it. So I've used this variant interaction in a few different ways. And you see how it just, you do it once and then you duplicate it multiple times and it's just, it's just the best thing in the world. The next type of advanced prototyping I wanna show you is how we can use Smart Animate to mimic feedback that user is used to receiving in the real world. So we've got these two screens here and what I wanted to do is to create sort of a progress bar that expands when it goes to the next screen. We're gonna do that using auto layout. So the first thing we wanna do is just to create that progress bar. So I'm gonna create a frame, so tapping on F and just dragging it to be this sort of rectangle. I'm gonna give it a fill color. I'm gonna go for a sort of grayish color and that's gonna be the background of my progress bar. Now progress bar usually has rounded corners. I'm gonna give it 100 rounded corners to make it really pill shaped. And I need it to be a bit bigger, holding down option, I grow it from either side. Yeah, that works for me. Now this is going to be the track. So in a progress bar, you've got the track and you've got the fill, which is what fills it inside. So I'm gonna rename this command R and say track. Now I'm going to change this to be an auto layout and you'll see why in a second. 
Inside of this auto layout, I'm gonna zero out everything, so no spacing, and then the padding as well, I need it to be zero on both axes. Now, before I do anything else, I want this track to remain how it is right now. Right now, it's set to hug and hug, which means that it's gonna hug all of its children because it's empty, it doesn't care, and it just kind of is what it is. But once we drop in a child, it's gonna warp. So I'm gonna change it to fixed width and fixed height, which means that I control it. So no matter what happens inside of it, this is the width and the height that it stays in. Now I want to drop a frame inside of it. So I'm going to click on F and just tap inside and I'm going to give this a fill color first of all before I do anything. Um, I, this is the fill color that's going to be the one that fills the progress bar. So I'm just going to select um, this kind of purpley color. Now I need this to be the same height as my progress bar. Um, so I'm going to set this to fill container, um, which means that it's going to fill the height that it can. And then for size, I'm going to say fill container as well. Now right now it's going to fill up the whole space. Instead of frame 26, I'm going to call this fill. And then I'm going to show you what I can do in order to create that kind of feeling that it's becoming smaller. If I go into my track auto layout and I'm going to control individual padding, I'm going to make the padding on the right bigger and I want you to see what happens when I do that. When I do that, if you remember from auto layout, because the child is set to fill container, it's only going to take up as much space as it can while following the rules. The rules before were, you've got as much space as you need, but now it's saying, no, no, you don't have any space because all of this space is taking up by 442 pixels of padding. So I've created this situation where it kind of looks like it's missing, right? It kind of looks like there's nothing there. I'm gonna now Command C and duplicate this into here. Now, whenever you're working with auto layout, it's really important to keep the exact same thing. So please duplicate, don't try to recreate because we need Figma to recognize that these are the same object and create that smart animation in between them. Now on this screen, it needs to be full. So instead of 442, I'm gonna select zero. Now let's connect these screens together. So when you click on this button, I'm gonna use my noodle and drag it over here. So on tap, you go here. I'm just gonna keep it on instant for now. And then when you click on this, you go there, instant, great. I see that the flow is set to end, but I want it to be on the start. I'm just gonna move it. I'm gonna call this flow progress bar. If I click on play, what's gonna happen is when I tap on this, it goes there. When I tap on this, it goes there. Now that works. But if I wanna add that really cool feeling of that animation, I'm gonna use Smart Animate. Once I change it to Smart Animate, what will happen is when I hover over things inside of my frame, you see I'm hovering over the progress bar in this frame and the progress bar in the other frame also gets this blue line around it. And that means Figma is telling me, I recognize that these are the same. So if they are slightly different in one, I'm gonna create that Smart Animation in between them and do that smooth transition between one state and the next. So once I change it to small animate, I'm gonna change the other noodle as well to small animate and then play this and now look what happens. So cool, right? It looks so believable. If I wanna take this even one step further, I'm gonna click on this noodle and instead of ease out, I'm gonna use one of these over here, let's say bouncy. Um, and when I do that, you see what happens? It gives that that little Now that's not really what I want for a progress bar. I'm probably gonna want something like gentle, maybe. Um, so let's have a look at that. Let's see. Hmm, that's nice, it's just a bit smoother. And you can just play around and see what exactly is the interaction you want. You can also play around with the timing of it. So if you don't want it to happen so quickly, let's say I actually wanna um, make it a bit longer. Um, and I click in here now and I'm gonna restart it. You see, it's taking its time getting there. I'm gonna show you one more way I really like to use Smart Animate is that is to give some more feedback to the user and show them how their actions are being handled. So for example, let's say I have this list of countries and I want the user to be able to click on sort. A pop-up will come up with this options and then they can click on, let's say alphabetical and then they can sort it in an alphabetical way. So first of all, let's create a sorted list. So I've got this alphabetically sorted list. The way I did it is because it's in an auto layout, I could just select one of the objects and then using the arrow keys on my keyboard, just move it around. Now I wanna connect this overlay. So I'm gonna click on the sort button and in prototype, I'm gonna say on tap, open overlay. And the overlay is called sort by. You can see when I hover over it here, it gets that little blue thing in the center. I want it to be in the center. I wanna be able to 
clothes when clicking outside of it and I just need it to dissolve I don't need any fancy animation so I actually need another one I'm gonna say duplicate this one so shift and option if I go back to my design panel, I need alphabetical to be selected. And I know that this is the component that I created earlier. So I can just change it to selected. Um, and what I'm going to say is when they click maybe on this row. So this is an interaction we haven't seen before. I, because I know that this is an overlay, I'm not going to navigate to a different screen because then it just makes that the whole screen. But what I'm going to do is they swap overlay. Okay, and I'm gonna use Smart Animate for this as well. And let's do the other way around. So when you tap on this one, it's going to swap overlay with that one. Um, I'm gonna just change the name. Now, when they click apply on the selected one, it's going to navigate to this screen. So when you navigate to in an overlay, it closes the overlay and navigates to a different screen. And I'm going to set this one to instant for now because I just want to show you how it looks before we, we make it kind of fancy. Again, the flow is here, so I'm just going to move it over here and say countries. I'm going to play that one. And let's have a look. When we click on sort, an overlay appears. I click on alphabetical, apply, and it's just changed. Now I'm gonna click on R to just restart it. Because it's an overlay, we can still see the screen behind. And when I click on apply, it just happens. I don't see it move. I wanna see it move. The user is gonna expect it to move. I'm gonna restart this, go back in here, and on this noodle, I'm gonna use Smart Animate. Let's see how it looks now. If I click on sort, alphabetical, apply, Look at that, okay? That to me as a user is really, it's just, it feels normal. It makes sense. So sometimes when you play this to a user, they're not gonna be like, wow, that's amazing. But if that doesn't happen, they might be like, wait, did it happen? Did it change? So it's something that people expect. It's in their mental models. So you need to make sure that you're following that to make the experience better for them. The last type of advanced prototyping I wanna look at is stateful prototyping. And that basically means that if a user made some decisions or changed anything in a second level of navigation so not on kind of the top one but they went somewhere they did something they come out and come back to it they are expecting to find it the way that they left it and we can do that using sections let's have a look so I've got this kind of thing here where I have this cap and when you click on this cat it should open this gallery when you can see multiple different cats so I want to populate these with some images. I have some images on my computer, so I'm going to go to my multiple image selector. I'm going to say Command Shift K. It will open my folder, and I'm just going to select these three, open. They are kind of loaded onto my mouse. I'm just going to click on these shapes and drop some cats into here. So if I go into prototype, I see that I've already got some basic prototyping in here just to save us time. So I've got the cat. It's connected to this first cat over here, and then all of the arrows are connected. So when you click backwards and forwards, you move between the cats. Let's see this happen. Just gonna play it. I'm gonna click on the cat and then move backwards and forwards between my lovely cats and then click on home. Now, what's gonna happen right now is I'm gonna show you it again. If I click on my cat here and let's say I stop on Popeye on this cat, on cat number three. When I click on home and I'm back to home, if I click on this cat again, I'm not on Popeye anymore. Okay, so it restarted. No, that's fine, but we can give the user a better experience while they're using this prototype by leaving it where they left it. And in order to do that, we're going to use sections. So I'm going to go into my design panel and I'm going to copy all of this. Um, I'm just going to select it and then hold down option and shift and just drag. Now, I just want to make sure that I can recognize the difference between the two. So I'm going to just change everything that's in this orange color uh, to be a different color, um, just so I can recognize that I've, you know, changed to a different prototype. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put these three into a section. You can find sections from the frame tool or you shift S. I'm going to put these into a section here. And I'm going to call it a uh, cat gallery. Now, because I copied this, I've got the prototyping still here, but I'm going to update one thing. When you tap on the cat, instead of going to Sven, I want it to go to cat gallery. So it's not going to go to the first cat anymore. It's going to go to this entire section. Let's see what that does. This one is called now orange cats one. So let's play it. Click on the cat. 
goes to the first cat just like before. But now if I leave it on Popeye and go to home, when I click back on the cat, I'm back to Popeye. So I've created this kind of stateful prototyping. You can do the same thing with forms or galleries or anything like that. So it kind of lets the user come back to where they left it. And that is it. We packed so much into this session. We talked about variant interactions, about how to use smart animate to give the user feedback. We looked at stateful prototyping. Now it's your turn to just use this in all of your designs, play around with it, see what works for you, how you can make a really believable and just true interaction for your users. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you at the next one.